Hello and welcome back to the channel. What I got for you today is my opinion of the current state of Della. Now before you start attacking me in the comments, I have no intentions to badmouth developers because I know how long it takes to make a game and how much work and effort and time they put into it. So anyone that might be working at Valve and watching this video, I can't thank you enough for this amazing game. One of the biggest things that I really like from the development team of Deadlock is how aggressive they are at buffing and nerfing characters. And I personally feel since this is a playtest, you could probably go even crazier. Although some players wouldn't like to see that, I think going crazy on nerfs and changes allows you to see the full potential of a character and it might bring insight to what changes you should make further on with the character. You can also see how committed the developers are. They will buff a certain character then immediately the next day or later on in the day they will revert the nerf. So unlike most game companies, the deadlock devs actually care about you, which is sadly uncommon in the recent games and just developers in general. So it's nice to see that developers actually care. Now something I would actually like to see, and I know a lot of players won't like it, is either some type of pick ban system or just a ban system in general. Now I'm not saying it has to be done right now, I'm talking about once they have enough characters so this system can actually be implemented. Whether it's a ban system where you and your team gets to pick at least two characters to ban or just being able to ban one character as a team. Because when it comes to at least ranked, if your team didn't get specific characters and the other team did, and just like most games, the team with the quote unquote broken characters are ultimately going to end up winning. Now I'm not saying you can't win against the most broken characters, it's just looking at it statistically. But I will say what they currently have now where you pick three characters is actually unique from any other MOBA. Because in most other MOBAs it's a pick ban system, or at least a pick system. In Deadlock you kind of just roll the dice and pray that you get the character you want, which can be fun at some times, and well rather disappointing at others. Staying on the topic of balancing, I think Deadlock also does a really great job of balancing items. I don't think any item is too strong or if any item was too strong they've changed it and i actually like how they buff items. This allows you to give more diversity. A lot of MOBA games don't really buff or nerf items, or at least buff them for a while. You're typically stuck on the same exact meta, stuck on the same items for quite a while. But when it comes to deadlock, if you find a super strong item, you start using it for a while, in about a week or less, that item will get nerfed. And it's not a over the top nerf, but they nerf it so you can actually pick other items and you're not just forced into one item tree. This allows for a lot more diverse gameplay and just further enrichment for the game, with people crafting up crazy builds that aren't too OP, so it's actually a nice thing to see. And as it is a playtest, all these changes are nice. And now that a lot of people already have access to the game, I think it's fair to say to take off invite only for people to get accepted into the game. I think now you should just either go on Steam and request access like that, or just make it publicly open now. But if they do that, I can see the benefits and well the downsides. The benefits are you get more eyes on the game, it could rise in popularity and just be better overall. But on the flip side if you have a large influx of players that could literally break the servers and I know that it's Valve and they have a ton of money but servers are expensive but you could also generate a lot of hate of a lot of people disliking the game which I think is kind of crazy because I've seen a lot of players that aren't mobile players that actually enjoy this game. I think it's safe to say at this point in the game as well I think you're free to do marketing for it either running some type of ads or just trying to incentivize players to actually look at the game. Now there already is a ton of people watching and playing the game all throughout the Day, so it might not make the biggest difference, but how I see it, I think more eyes is always the best option because any publicity is good publicity. And I honestly love how most of the kits for every single character in Deadlock is very unique. In some MOBAs, you get pretty similar abilities, but they're just called something else. In Deadlock, pretty much every single kit is super unique, which I think is a big plus side to this game. It allows for further experimentation and creativity for the players, so keeping that is very good. Now I want to talk about in the future of this game now. So with this game, we kind of already see a pro scene developing. We're seeing third party tournaments with cash prizes and teams being formed. Now, the only thing that I see is that people for the first time watching Deadlock and it's at a pro level, some people might not really understand as although it has the core concepts of MOBAs with pushing lanes and stuff, if you're watching it for the first time, you're gonna honestly have no idea what's going on. Take for example like CS and Valorant, although you can't really compare it as it's an FPS, I'm just talking about it's easier to watch. The game is pretty straightforward, two bomb sites and a bomb to plant, but for Deadlock it is a over the shoulder MOBA game, it can be quite difficult to watch. That's why I feel like the Smite viewership and other MOBA viewership is not the best. Actually going in and watching the game can be pretty difficult. Honestly, especially from the spectator or observer side, you have 12 players to watch. 
all doing something at the same exact time. All moving, farming, and fighting at the same time can be pretty hard to watch. So it's almost like you're gonna need to see 12 different perspectives at the same exact time to actually understand what's going on in the game. Because if you have one or two observers, you could easily miss a fight or something significant happening in the game. With so many different perspectives to watch, this could be pretty overwhelming for a viewer. Now you could argue that split screen view could be good, but you have to think, there's 12 players. Are you going to split the screen into 12 different sections to watch them all? But knowing Valve, they'll probably cook something up so we really won't have to worry about it. This is just me speculating for the future. Now, another thing for ranked, I honestly wish it would just be all day ranked at this point. I like how there's different time cutouts, but it could get a little annoying at some points, especially for players that play at certain times of the day and could no longer fit in the jurisdictions of this said times now. So I think there's enough players to run ranked all day. And in my opinion, I don't think any harm will be done doing it. But overall, I think the current state of deadlock is in a very good place. You have developers that are actually listening to the community, doing a lot of changes, you have a ranked mode, you have new patches coming out about every two weeks or every other week or so, and you already have six new heroes to pick from. Now, I said this about a lot of games I used to play, Battle Bit Remastered, The Finals, X Defiant. I think this game has a lot of potential, and I think it has the possibility of becoming the next big thing in esports and just gaming in general. But anyways, that was my quick little talk on the current state of deadlock although i kind of deviated from the topic a little bit i can't thank you enough for watching i hope you have a great day and well i'll catch you in the next one